hello everybody, it's me again, Monster 100 And this time we're going to be doing something different with the creepypasta genre today. This time we're going to be reading over a creepypasta. No, yeah, you know, no, none of these little crappy pasta stuff. A real creepy pasta. And the first one we'll be reading is the Black Friday incident. So sit back, relax, and grab a bottle of Coke or something, and get some popcorn, and let's read the Black Friday incident. The early stages of production on the film Toy Story were a complete nightmare. The production was in some sort of development hell until the Black Friday incident. Disney harassed the then new animation studio Pixar constantly. They were to produce and release the film, and they wanted results as quickly as possible. Disney tried everything to eliminate Pixar's efforts to deviate from the Disney formula, even at the time threatening to shut down the production. Disney sent notes on revisions that they thought would improve the film. They insisted through their notes, which read, Edge, the film needs more edge. The people working on the film at the time struggled so hard to maintain all of Disney's notes and demands. Once a week, they were required to fly across the country to the Disney offices to represent them the progress that they made. Every time they were met with the same response, Edge, the film needs more edge. Pixar revised the film so hard to meet the deadlines that it would result in some rather interesting changes. In order to achieve edge, the film became a lot darker. Woody became a wildly unlikable character, much more angry and far less comedic than in the final film. Bo Peep's role in the story was far more prevalent often flirtatious towards the males and the first to accuse Woody of pushing Buzz out of the window. Buzz Lightyear was referred to as Lunar Larry in his point of production. He is highly reminiscent of an old superhero, talking in a deep voice and is even more deluded and ignorant of his surroundings. The other toys were relatively unchanged save for some minor, you know, differences in their appearance. Pixar employees worked literally 24-7 non-stop. Director John Lasseter joked on one the more occasion that he had the best parking space at the whole office because his car hadn't moved for over three days. Some of the writers and storyboard artists began to suffer from chronic insomnia, and a few writers reported seeing visions of Buzz and Woody taunting them on the lack of progress, chanting, Edge, the film needs more edge. Many of the initial writers quit due to the stress it was putting on their personal lives, much to the distress of the remaining crew. By November of 1992, there were only two of the five writers left, and only one of the three storyboard artists. The remaining storyboard artist was named Ralph Thompson. He joined the Pixar team in the winter of 1987, working on short films such as Tin Toy and Nick Knack. He and at he at that same time did some storyboard work for the Nightmare Before Christmas with his fellow artist Joe Rant. Joe came down with a serious illness and hadn't been to work in a week. Ralph worked constantly in fear of the inevitable correction by Disney. More edge, more edge. Each presentation made another row of sleepless nights of rewriting and redrawing the same characters in the same bedroom over and over and over again. It was maddening. One morning, John Lasseter, Andrew Stanton, Stanton, and other higher-ups at Pixar came to the office and told everyone what happened at their last meeting. Disney felt that things were not looking very good for the film and demanded that in less than a week to see the completed film in story reels, storyboards with audio basically, with massive revisions. There was a general groan and whining from the crew, and they went back to work. Ralph worked harder than all others involved, sometimes at 2 o'clock in the morning. One of the writers would walk into Ralph's office with a packet of newly written scenes, more to draw, and with more drawings meant more scratch voice work. He had Disney's vague instructions racing through his mind. 
more, more edge, edgier, more. We want results, people, edgier. This is the business, faster, more edge, move on already. He thought to himself exactly, the film needed an edge. It needed to be darker, more cynical. It needed more adult humor in situations. It needed an attitude. Of course, Ralph, of course, Ralph, you goddamn retard. How can you not see it sooner? Edge, all those hundred hours bent over a desk and all you needed was some edge. Why didn't you listen sooner? He gave the film an edge. The film reels were flown over with the main crew to the head offices of Disney. The date was November 27th, 1992, Black Friday. This film was brought into the Disney screening room. The reel was about 48 and a half minute long, half minutes long. The movie started out as a western style, sh style shootout between Woody and Andy, resulting in Woody being shot down. Andy being shot down. It is revealed that this was just a game played inside of Andy's mind. The film continued on with little problems for about the first 20 minutes or so, though several gags seemed a bit off tone for the film. For example, Mr. Patel Head would pull out one of his eyes and kick them under Bo Peep's dress for a look see. There were several scenes of Woody yelling at the toys to stop caring about Buzz slash Larry and pay attention to him, culminating in insults and minor acts of violence. The scene comes where Andy can only take one toy to Pizza Planet and Woody pushes Buzz out the window. Woody offers to shake hands with Buzz, Larry, only to throw him out the window. There is a stock smashing sound. The other toys are shocked and antag antagonize Woody for what he has done what he has done. Woody shows little remorse and screams at Slinky Dog to make the toys stop harassing him. After much yelling, one well, of the green army men saying the word God damn, the toys grab Woody and toss him out the window as well. He falls into the ground with a low thump. Cheering is heard from the interior of the house. The quality on the storyboard has become less more refined and almost like chicken scratch. Woody gets up and sees Buzz slash Larry. Buzz body is shadow on impact. His arms and legs were broken off and located only a few inches away. There was a large crack down the middle of his chest revealing a mess of buttons and wires inside. He gave off a sort of electrical twitch motion in his head. His eyes looked as if they were going to pop out of their plastic sockets. The twitching stops after a few moments and Woody looks in fear at what he has done to Buzz and runs off. There's a jump cut to the scene where the two get stuck in a claw machine. The storyboard art is back to its normal level of quality. The machine is filled with sunglasses wearing pieces as opposed to the aliens in the finished movie. Buzz is completely unarmed and intact. The scene is almost verbatim to the final film. Sid, the antagonist in, the control, in control of the claw, is wearing a yellow shirt and is smoking three cigars at once. The Claw grabs Woody and Buzz slash Larry, putting them in the clutches of Sid. There's another jump cut, once again returning to the chicken scratch style of the artwork. The scene is inside of Sid's room. Woody looks around him in the room in fear. He tips toes around the room and collapses after seeing one of Sid's mutant toys. The reel now shows unrelated test animation of the characters running. A few seconds of Buzz and Larry running in place, a few seconds of Woody running, and nearly a minute of the two running together. The footage is distorted and, and Spanish text is present on the screen. It looked like clay models that got to life. There's now a shot of Woody standing in front of a black background, and the trademark Pixar ball, Pixar, Pixar ball is rolling around in the distance. The animation is now in the traditional animation style of a typical 2D Disney film. Woody is now completely naked with anatomical correct features and stares directly into the camera. His flesh begins to rot away with the exception of his eyes which remain intact. Woody begins to moan in a low voice. What remains of his lips curl to a smile. Bits of flesh peeling off as this happens. He lifts up his decomposing arm manually and waves into the camera. His fingers dig into his eyes. Dark blood oozes out of their sockets. Woody begins to scream and growl. Don't you want it? Don't you want it? Don't you love it? He digs so deep to rip the entire top half of his head off. 
Woody gives a sigh of relief and begins eating the flesh off of the skull before tossing it aside. He writes the word Edge on the screen with his rotting fingertips. The remaining 15 minutes of the reel were pencil scribbles accompanied by the shrill screams of a young woman. The word Edge is burned to the projection screen. The screening ended in complete silence. Chairman, chairman of Disney at the time, Jeffrey Katzenberg, walked out of the screening, quietly telling his colleagues, notes. They were following all the notes we were giving them. Upon returning to the Pixar office, offices, writer Pete Doc, Doctor, found the body of Ralph Thompson in an enormous pile of paper in his office. Further analysis found that the cause of death was a heart attack brought on by a lack of sleep and stress. The papers were storyboards and animation cells of the final coherent scene of Woody. The word edge scrawled, scrawled on the back of each one. After the Black Friday screening, Disney was far less involved with the film. Pixar was given the, fr given the freedom to make the film their way. The film went on to be a huge success, critically and financially. The Black Friday incident still remains a very much mystery. Very much a mystery. Further information, there's a short bonus feature on the Toy Story Blu-ray Blu -ray about the incident. Curiously, cur curiously, not mentioning the more notable scenes. It can be also found on YouTube for anyone who's curious to see the whitewashed history. Disney produced a short documentary to avoid discussing the in incident. If you contact them about it, you'll be redirected to the Blu-ray's Amazon page if you get a response at all. Now, I'm going to tell you right here that I like this creepypasta. I really do. It has a fair amount of buildup and a hint of realism to it because the Black Friday incident is mostly true. I mean, you can look up the Black Friday, you know, footage online and if you liked Woody and Sav Toy Story, let me tell you something right here. <laughs> like, after you watch that, you're going to like really dislike him. And we do know that Disney did want, you know, a little bit, a little bit of edge in the new film. <laughs> and you can actually find the original scene on the end, just as I said. And that's what I love about this creepypasta. It has, like, realism and evidence to it. And inside of private, inside of private screenings, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, like, that's what's called private screenings. And basically, this stuff actually could have happened. I mean, the guy could have actually added something, you know, creepy to it or something like that. But the problem is that the creator creator of the film reel inside of the creepypasta, Ralph Thompson, seems to not actually exist. The only thing that I found about a Ralph Thompson is an artist from, you know, who died inside of 2000. Now, he did in fact die, but it was obviously because of old age or sickness because, you know, he was, you know, kind of old and, you know, stuff like that. And, yeah, it has a hint of realism to it. And, but the problem is that the people inside the creepypasta don't really have a realistic action, even though, I mean, realistic reaction to it. I mean, like, you, you just don't come out of a screening and see, like, a whole bunch of, like, like messed up stuff on the screen and just say, note, they followed all the notes correctly. Like, you just don't do that. Like, somebody would have, like, ran screaming out of that, like, private screening. <laughs> like, come on, man. And I felt that the, um, Woody who was naked and was taking, turned into like a Woody zombie and took off half of his head was kind of unneeded inside the story. I mean, I felt like there should have been something else there. I don't know, probably like, maybe like an animation of the person's, like, descent into like, you know, madness or something. You know, that could have been kind of cool. But what we got here was pretty good and I really liked it. And so that's all I gotta say. See you guys later, and bye.